Welcome to my channel Dentist Asad. Are you preparing for MOH, DHA, DOH and other Gulf Dental exams? Get concise, high yield revision content curated for exam success. Alright, let's dive in. Enamel hypoplasia. It's a condition that involves the incomplete or defective formation of the enamel matrix in both primary and permanent teeth. This happens due to factors that impact the function of ameloblasts which are the cells responsible for enamel formation. Now, let's talk about the types of enamel hypoplasia. There are two main categories. First, we have environmental enamel hypoplasia. This type arises from external factors like nutritional deficiencies, infections, trauma, and even excess fluoride, which is known as fluorosis. Then, there's hereditary enamel hypoplasia, often referred to as amelogenesis imperfecta. This type affects the stages of enamel formation due to genetic factors. Moving on, let's focus on environmental enamel hypoplasia. This type is particularly interesting because it can result from a variety of external influences. So, what causes environmental enamel hypoplasia? Well, there are several factors. First, nutritional deficiencies, especially in vitamins A, C, and D, can play a big role. Childhood infections such as measles, chickenpox, and scarlet fever are also significant contributors. Congenital conditions like syphilis and RH hemolytic disease can lead to enamel hypoplasia as well. Birth trauma, hypocalcemia, or the ingestion of chemicals like excess fluoride are other causes. Radiation to the jaws at a young age can also impact enamel formation. Fever-related hypoplasia is another factor and it can affect both maxillary and mandibular teeth equally. Congenital syphilis in particular leads to distinct dental anomalies such as Hutchinson incisors which are screwdriver shaped incisors and mulberry molars. Lastly, there's the Turner tooth, which is a defect in a permanent tooth due to infection or trauma to its primary predecessor. Premolars are commonly affected teeth as a result of damage from an abscessed primary molar. Um, fluorosis excess fluoride intake causes enamel defects ranging from white chalky areas to severe brown discoloration, making enamel prone to fracture. The ideal concentration in water is about 0.7 to 1 part per million. Levels greater than 1.5 parts per million can induce fluorosis. Clinical features defects vary from white lines, pits or grooves to severe malformations. Amelogenesis imperfecta or AI is a group of inherited enamel defects affecting both primary and permanent dentitions. Hypoplastic, and this is the most common type. Uh, reduced enamel matrix leads to thin but well mineralized enamel, which can appear smooth or rough with pitting. Clinically, the enamel demonstrates variable patterns, including generalized or localized pinpoint pitting that is most prominent on buccal surfaces, to smooth and rough changes with white to yellow-brown tapered teeth. There are seven subtypes referred to alphabetically as type IA through G. Four are autosomal dominant, two autosomal recessive, and one X-linked dominant. Type two, hypomaturation. Here, the enamel is fully formed but poorly mineralized, making it soft and prone to fracture. It often presents as chalky, or creamy opaque or snow capped. Fracturing of the enamel is common. In its milder form, snow capped teeth appear. In more severe cases, teeth can resemble crown preparations with excessive interdental spacing. There are four subtypes the 2A through D with autosomal and X linked recessive inheritance, type 3 hypocalcified. In this type, the enamel matrix is normal in quantity but poorly calcified, giving it a honey brown appearance that chips easily. There are two subtypes, A, autosomal dominant, and B, autosomal recessive. 
developing and erupting teeth are normal in shape with normal enamel thickness but with an unusual honey brown color soon after eruption the brown enamel undergoes severe chipping leaving a roughened brown dentinal surface with some enamel remaining especially at the gingival margin an anterior uh, open bite is often present as a result of loss of posterior vertical dimension type ivo hypomaturation hypoplastic with torodontism this type is a combination of features from type 2 and type 1 it presents with yellowish to opaque mottling attrition and large uh, large pulp chambers there are two subtypes type a and b both subtypes are seen in the trichodento osseous syndrome defects are limited to specific regions of enamel with normal root formation amelogenesis imperfecta there is generalized radiolucency of enamel thin enamel layers and altered crown shapes with possible large pulp chambers in hypomaturation types management and treatment of enamel hypoplasia are crucial because well it's more prone to early childhood caries now let's talk about restorative treatments first off amalgam is not used for minor defects glass ionomer and compomers which are polyacid modified composite resins are recommended for more severe cases crowns such as stainless steel or porcelain are used to protect the teeth from further wear additionally fluoride treatments are essential to reduce sensitivity and reinforce the enamel dental sealants topical fluoride applications and varnishes every three months along with uh, calcium phosphate are part of the preventive regimen aesthetic treatments can make a significant difference for mild fluorosis teeth whitening or bleaching can be effective for moderate to severe discoloration veneers are often the best option preventive uh, measures are crucial early diagnosis and intervention with fluoride management can help regular dental checkups are essential to monitor tooth development it's also important to avoid excess fluoride intake during early childhood for environmental hypoplasia adequate maternal and childhood nutrition including vitamins a c and d is key limiting fluoride intake during tooth development to an optimal concentration of 0.7 to 1 parts per million is also important additionally uh, immunization and uh, effectively managing childhood infections can make a big difference for amelogenesis imperfecta genetic counseling for families with a history of ai is recommended early intervention is crucial to manage dental complications and plan for long-term care